Hi, I'm Sarah Pettick, owner of Bike the Gap. We arrange self-guided bike tours. Well, we've arranged hundreds of self-guided tours on the CNO, and we can help you too. Our riders usually have a few basic questions about the trail before booking their tours, and you may have the same questions. Uh, a common question is what type of bike is best for this trail? Another one is what is the trail surface really like? Uh, and finally, what is there to actually see on the CNO? What is it like? So to help answer their and your questions, we're going to give you a glimpse of what a self-guided bike tour on the CNO towpath is like. It's no substitute for actually riding the trail, but it will give you an idea of what to expect. I also hope to show you why the CNO absolutely should be on your biking bucket list and how we can help you check it off. We are starting at the western end of the trail in Cumberland, Maryland. From here, the canal towpath runs all the way to Washington, D.C. That's 185 miles. Today, we'll just be riding the first 60 miles to Hancock, Maryland. Along the way, we'll begin to already see some of the natural beauty and the history that makes this trail so unique. So let's get started riding. So I thought this would be a really good place to stop and look at the actual surface of the towpath since that's uh, usually one of the first questions that our riders are asking us. Uh, right behind me, actually, it's pretty wide. The trail in general is a dirt surface and this wider section is typical of a good bit of it. It does narrow in places. There's also a grassy berm that will run through certain portions. So the first half to maybe two thirds of the trail is similar to this, maybe a little bit narrower. And then it will look a little bit different as we get closer to DC and we'll see that in a later video. I think what's important to note here though is the water. So because this is a dirt surface, it will tend to retain water more than a gravel rail trail would. And so this surface does become softer and muddier at times than trails that other folks might be riding. For that reason, we recommend to our riders that they have uh, bikes with tires that are at least 32 millimeters wide. And the wider you can go, the better. I actually am riding a bike with two and a half inch wide tires. Uh, so a wider tire is gonna mean a more comfortable ride. Uh, you also want to make sure there's tread on those tires because again the softer and sometimes muddy surface can be slick and if you have some tread it will help you keep upright and keep your balance. Path, and behind me is the actual canal. Uh, the, the CNO Canal was, uh, began construction in 1828, just after the Erie Canal was completed. And it actually took about 20 years for the entire canal to be constructed all the way from Washington to Cumberland. Uh, when you would build the canal, you would first have to excavate the dirt out of the canal prism. This is where the water would stay and then move that dirt to either side. And in some cases, that's the dirt that's creating the towpath or widening what was already there. So the towpath we're riding on is still that dirt surface that the boat workers and the mules that are 
pulling the canal boats along would have to walk on. Behind me, this section of the canal is still somewhat intact. You do still have water in the prism, although it's stagnant water, so it's quite green with algae on top. Other sections of the towpath, you'll see that the canal has broken down more and the water is no longer there. It's just a dirt depression. And uh, there are other portions though where the canal has been reconstructed and the water is flowing nicely and we actually will see some replica canal boats on that surface. So uh, we'll look for that in the next videos, but this begins to give you an idea of what the trail surface looks like and what bike you might want to have with you when you ride the trail. This is one of the iconic structures of the CNO towpath. We are at the western end of the Pawpaw Tunnel. The Pawpaw Tunnel was completed in 1850 and it is over 3,000 feet long. I generally dismount and walk through it, although you could ride through it as well. The surface is a little bit rough and it is quite dark inside. So if you're biking through or walking through, I definitely recommend that you have a light with you. It's a fun place to stop for some photos on either side and also a nice cool break during the middle of your ride. made it to Hancock, Maryland. This first section of the CNO is certainly the most isolated and really gives you a sense of adventure. The ride through these forests is really peaceful and you have nothing to do but enjoy the views, listen to the wildlife, and just keep the wheels spinning. To me, that's the perfect way to start any bike tour. At the end of each day on our self-guided tours, we have our riders stay at a B&B or a hotel along the trail. Riders who prefer shorter mileage days tend to stay over in Little Orleans on their first night, about 40 miles from Cumberland. Longer distance riders will stay right here in Hancock. Our tours include your rooms each night, transportation at either end of the trail if needed, and even luggage shuttling daily. Basically everything you need to ensure that you have the best biking experience possible. If you'd like to have us plan your bike trip on the CNO Canal Towpath, just visit our website to learn more about our self-guided bike tour services.